In this question, we're given a bunch of data and told that it contains an outlier. So I'm going to copy paste. We're going to need the correlation coefficient. So I'm going to build a graph off of this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it twice because I know I'm going to need to do it twice. So highlight, insert, chart, scatter. All right, boom, my outliers are way over here. Okay. So the first one is with the outlier, the second one's without the outlier. All right, so my outlier was way off to the right. So the Y value is pretty normal. It's kind of right in the middle, but the X value is huge. So I'm looking at the X column and I'm looking for the really big X value. For me, it was the last one. So I'm gonna come down here going to remove the outlier down here. So I'm going to do the same uh, insert, chart, scatter. Okay, perfect. Notice the scales are really far off because this one goes to 250. The one I just built goes to 70. Uh, we can address that in a minute, but I want to get a trend line, more options, display equation and R squared. All right, first one, same thing, plus trend line, click the arrow, uh, more options. Now, I didn't close this window, and I believe if I go over to here, I can get the same options that I wanted. Equation R squared, I am going to close it finally, and now drag that up here. All right. I'm going to copy, oh, I want the R squared value or the R value, one of those two. I don't need the line this time. I'm gonna paste just the text. So I'm copying, right click paste, and I wanna go just the uh, destination formatting. Okay. So I have these two R values here. It's a little easier for me to see them than trying to figure out, there's a lot going on in these charts. All right, we're not asked about the trend line, we're asked about the R value here. Uh, let me go ahead, I'm gonna move these out of the way because I do wanna stretch these charts out. I'm putting the first one on the top, the second one on the bottom, they're very different. They're off by a lot. One of them's 10 times bigger than the other one. All right, this first chart goes to 250. Uh, it has the same Y value, so I'm gonna make it much wider and what I'm trying to do is get 70 right about here on that first chart. That's pretty close. All right, there we go. So now we can get a pretty accurate comparison. The, Points look pretty similar here, uh, but you can see that the line is way different. Uh, one of them has a negative, first one has a negative slope, second one a positive slope. So these are massively different. Uh, what is the correlation coefficient with the outlier? So remember, this is R, not R squared. Uh, so with the outlier is the first one. So that's R squared. Regular R is square root. Now. Probably should have copied that first. Copy, square root, paste. Just copying the number. So again, I just put the number in there. And just put the number in there. All right, so we have two R values, but one of them is negative. Uh, be careful, both of yours might be negative or both might be positive. For me, the first one is going down to the right, looking at the uh, line here. You can also, you have to go way over here. That thing is should be over here. All right, you can tell the uh, slope of my line is negative. So that means my first R value is negative square root. Uh, the second R value is regular square root, positive square root, because the uh, slope is positive 5. All right. 
I'm not going to round here. Copy, paste, copy, paste. All right. I chose a different version of this question just to look at this second part. Would inclusion of the outlier change the evidence for or against a linear correlation? It primarily depends on your correlation coefficient with the outlier. So we look right here. What we're looking for is a number that's far away from zero. Remember this correlation coefficient can be between negative one and positive one. And right now, my data has it very close to negative one. So this is a very strong correlation. It's a negative correlation, but remember it's far away from zero. Without the outlier, if I computed it, still it's negative, but it's much closer to zero right here. So it got much further away from negative one, much closer to zero, and therefore it did change it. So it changed the evidence for or against a linear correlation. So this one would be yes. And we're, I'm gonna do a few new versions here, and we're just gonna look at the two values. You do have to compute these on your own when you do your homework. So here again, we have a big negative number far from zero and positive. So these are very different, but this one's a big negative number and this one's on the other side of zero because it's positive. So this again would be yes. All right, you could get, oh, here we go, perfect. So this number is very close to zero. So there's not really a correlation right here. So throwing out the outlier, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, this happens to be relatively close, a little actually further from zero. So in this case, no, it would not have changed the uh, correlation coefficient uh, or for or against a linear correlation. Let's do a few more of these. So again, pretty close to zero. So doesn't really matter what we get here. Also close to zero. So nothing really changed. And we'll check, all right. So I'm looking for, okay, perfect. So here we go. Well, this one's big negative, so very close to negative one, and then close uh, is positive. So this one's definitely, yes, changing. And I'm looking for a more ambiguous case. So this one, they're both negative, but neither one is very strong. So uh, we're looking for something like a 0.8 and bigger or negative 0.8 and smaller. So these are both still close enough to zero. It doesn't really matter. In this example, we have a medium weak correlation coefficient here, and then an even weaker one here. But because the initial one was not that strong, uh, whatever happens is not a big deal. And so it's not really changing the evidence for or against a linear correlation. This one's a little more ambiguous, but we're gonna go with no on this one. Because again, we didn't start with a strong correlation coefficient. You're looking for something like uh, negative 0.8 and smaller or positive 0.8 and bigger. So you want further away from zero on the initial one before it matters what happened on the second one.